the RTPA Games booth yet again, and we've talked to a couple designers of new games. We've moved on, or moved up perhaps, to the artist level here. We're talking to uh, Anthony Papantonio, who is the artist of several uh, RTPA Games. You did drum roll and the game we're standing right in front of here, a briefcase. You've done the art for both of these games. I'm always interested to find out uh, how you got involved in doing art for board games. For um, is I'm, a, I'm a gamer first. All right. So um, everything that has to do with games is very exciting to me. And uh, the reason I, I started doing art is because of games. Hmm. I started with uh, role-playing games uh, and uh, wanted to draw the characters. And then I, I wanted to create the whole world for my for my gaming group. Hmm. And uh, back when I was 13, so from that I decided that this is uh, the way I want to live: uh, doing art for games, doing uh, having storytelling through images to uh, create an, uh, a very nice uh, atmosphere for the game. So the, creating the world of the creating game, the world, imaginary basically. world. And yeah, and uh, I always try to choose uh, game uh, game products that have to do with the world, not just uh, not, not not so much the abstract games, but more uh, games that have characters or they have a, a whole world to explore. So it sounds like you've been able to make, have you been able to make a career of this from setting that as a goal as at 13 all the way through to did you do art school? I did art school. Yeah, I went to United States to uh, study illustration, uh, illustration for video games in nice. particular, and then uh, from video games I made the jump to, to board games because I was always a fan of board games rather than, than video games. It's more so, exciting. For me. So how long have you been working in the industry doing art for various games and projects? Uh, for board games or as overall, a overall, overall, uh, more than. Uh, Wow, nice, nice. Maybe tell us some of the other titles or other kinds of things that you worked on. If someone likes your work, it's always kind of okay. fun to see how, well, how you show up in other places and companies. Um, and things. I, I, uh, I did a little bit of work for uh, for the other RTP game, Among the Stars. Yes. I did a small part of that. Okay. And uh, I also did uh, work for... Uh, I was the main artist for uh, Fallen City of Perez. Oh, yes. Which is a game that uh, used to be released uh, very soon, if very not soon, now, right? So, uh, it was a Kickstarter uh, uh, product, uh, project. Uh, and then uh, my other my other games are um, video games. Okay. So I've worked in uh, Deathfall, which is a massively played video game. Which is I worked there for three years. This is to be released 2013. Okay. This is my my gaming career. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of the process, is there a different process from an artistic standpoint? Uh, comparing video games to board oh, yes. games, maybe talk about that a little yeah. bit. Uh, and, uh, well, first of all, the team is usually one person team. The art team. Uh, in video games, you you have a huge team. Uh, sometimes 50 people team. Uh, so in uh, in board games, you have a mu much more intimate relationship to the to each specific game. You feel uh, very connected to each game because it's basically you yourself that that is doing it. Right. You are also much closer to, uh, to the producing team. Uh, all, all this is very nice because it creates a very cozy environment to work in. Um, and you, you are more responsible to, for the final product uh, than in the video game where you are just a peg in the, in the big wheel. Uh, I definitely prefer working in board games. <laughs> well, sure. it seems like you'd have more freedom, more to, freedom. to actually you know, do the art in the way you think it's, it's yes. done. Obviously, the publisher is part of that Much more freedom, but you're also sure. free to choose, um, if you have several styles of, of illustrating things, mm -hmm. uh, you're free to develop a new style for a particular game, which is, I, try, I try to do this. Uh, so, a different style for briefcase, more corporate-like, mm -hmm. a different style for drum roll, which is more um, entertainment, uh, fantasy sort of work. Yes, yes. So, it's really fun. I would not, on the surface, to look at those two games, it wouldn't be very obvious that it's the same artist that's right. behind that. And that's a compliment, I think, to show that you can do lots of yeah, try, different styles of art. I try to develop a unique language for each game, each project. This, you cannot do this in video games. In video games, they hire you for a specific thing. Yes. Here, they hire you to develop a whole visual uh, language and style for a particular game. It's very nice. And I would think that would provide nice challenges to you as an artist, because each one becomes a different thing, right? Yes, but 
a very uh, entertaining challenge. So basically, doing board games is, is something that I would do for free if I could, <laughs> but they just pay me to do it. So <laughs> it's, that's a fringe, it's better. fringe benefit, right? <laughs> Um, now, in terms of media, what is there a particular media that you tend to work in more than others? Oils, acrylics. I'm know? trained. Uh, I'm trained in traditional mediums, so I, I, I'm trained to do uh, watercolor and uh, oils and acrylics, and I'm fond of all of those uh, materials and mediums. But uh, currently, all of my work is digital. Uh, all the processes remain uh, the same. I just transfer the traditional processes into the digital medium. Is that a difficult transition to go from doing traditional to uh, digital? Or? As technology progresses, uh, it, it, it tries to, to uh, simulate more and more the traditional mediums. So currently, I'm, I'm, I, want, I want to go into the minis, market miniatures, mm -hmm. games, uh, and the sculpting, the digital sculpting programs are very familiar to me because of my sculpting. Oh, with my clay video. scouting background. Oh, okay. okay. So uh, even those, even even these digital tools become more and more uh, traditional. Like although it's, they're in the screen, they are very comfortable to me. It's funny how they pull the old world skills into the new world. The more the technology advances, the more it goes back to more and more traditional. Uh, <laughs> There was something to those those techniques and those methods yes. and those time honored they are ways very, of doing things. They are very intuitive. Mm. So uh, that's what technology tries to do. It tries to do uh, applications that are very intuitive to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, I I could work in oils and acrylics, mm -hmm. but this would take a huge production time for the games. Yes. You cannot uh, you cannot afford that, especially uh, Kickstarter games and indie games where you need a very fast uh, output in order to promote the product on the sites. Right. You cannot do it traditionally. Sure. Oils will take a couple of weeks to dry, to scan it. Yeah, so yeah. It's you, you, you <laughs> not going to work, it. right. <laughs> so what is the typical turnaround time, let's say, for a briefcase or for drum roll from the time they say, yes, we want you to do all the art? How long a process does that, uh, is that for you? Those two, those two projects are, are huge, first of all, because, right, right. because there is lots and lots of art, because they are card games. Every card has its own uh, <laughs> illustration. I mean, there is a board, but apart from the board, the, the game is, is based basically on cards. And because it's based on cards, and each card is very intricate, mm -hmm. uh, there is a huge amount of work. I would say, uh, the be at, at best, uh, a couple of months. At best. That's fast. That's really That's fast. fast I, because, I would say. Because of the digital elements. Right. Otherwise, it would take uh, maybe a couple of years. <laughs> well, before we wrap up here, are there any new projects that you're working on? Or any uh, any type of game, since you are, you're are you a gamer and an artist, kind of have a foot in both worlds, any kind of game that you'd really like to, to do art for that you haven't had the chance to? Uh, well, currently, uh, we start work at the, at the new Artipia project. Uh, which I'm very excited about, but it's a sec top secret, I cannot talk about it. Fair enough, but, fair enough. But it's a great concept. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm also working on expansions on the Corez uh, product. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I, I would really like to work on um, a more science fiction and uh, fantasy uh, mm -hmm. projects. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a great challenge to translate a corporate project, like a briefcase which is business, mm -hmm. and create a world for that because uh, corporate world is very uh, cold, and, and it's a good challenge. Uh, I, I like doing briefcase a lot mm -hmm. to, to try to make a fun game out of a world that is colder, and uh, it was great. But uh, I'm more uh, inclined toward to the more imaginative, uh, yeah. creative side. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate Anthony you taking the time out to talk to us. It's really fun to get to talk to artists because they have such a huge influence on people's enjoyment of the game. I don't think you can underestimate how important that visual world that, that the game creates is to the enjoyment you get out of the playing the game, I think, too. For me, it is when I, when I play games. <laughs> me too, me too. Well, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.